getting the best paying loads, you know, using my tricks. So obviously we do have a couple of tricks, you know, that I want to, you know, show you today. Um, there's one particular one. This is, um, that is a good one. One thing I want to talk about this is the best paying loads in, well, first of all, what's, what's like, what's best paying a load in, in, we get a lot of carriers, you know, ask this question, like, you know, hey, come on, like we need like best paying loads. We need high paying loads. And we just, you know, I always say this, like, hey, we need to talk about this when you say best paying loads and high paying loads. What do you exactly mean when you say high paying loads and best paying loads, for example? So let's talk about this. And you guys know the drill. Um, let me see. Um, Ashraf says, hi, Kamal. Hi. Um, Camille says, hi, Kamal. Hi. Hi, everybody. So you guys know the drill. We'll, you know, just go over the uh, quick training and then I'll start taking, you know, your questions. I, you know, I have my, um, you know, second screen that I want to show you guys, but I really want to talk about this, you, you know, when the carrier says, and obviously myself, I'm a carrier and, in, you know, nothing, you, you know, no offense to, to the carriers and brokers out there, but, you know, we need to talk about this, what, what people when you say, if you're a carrier and if you say to your dispatcher or independent freight dispatcher, hey, we need best paying loads, um, we, re we really need to talk about this, you know, because it's, 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 uh, um, it's objective. I think one thing when, when I say, if I'm a carrier and I say, you know, I need best paying loads and you need to know, um, or you as an independent freight dispatcher, you need to say to your carrier, like, Yes, but like I need to know your cost per mile, um, guys. You, you you guys have a lot of a um, lot of questions. Um, let me go over the training real quick, and I'll be taking your questions. Okay, let's see. Shrim is so lagging. Oh, I don't know. So let's see. Let me check real quick. I think everything is ready to go. Cool. Yeah. So, you know, get prepared, prepare your questions. You know, I'll do my best to, you know, help you guys. So the independent freight dispatchers, you need to guys ask this very important question to your um, carrier. When, when the carrier says, hey, I need best paying loads. Well, yes, we can get you the best paying, you know, loads. Then, yes, you will be, you know, getting paid. But I really want to know, like, what's the cost? per mile. This is very important. So I have four trucks and two of my trucks, let's say paid off and cost per mile for those two trucks are very different than, you know, my, you know, other two trucks, which like, you know, I haven't paid yet. So that means the cost per mile is, you know, uh, significantly higher than those, you know, two trucks that I paid off. So the reason why I'm saying this is because these two you know, paid off trucks, meaning the cost per mile is lower. That means if you run a lane from Atlanta to Houston, Texas, that means if somebody pays me $3,000, I don't know, $4,000, I'm okay with that. But think about there will be a carrier that, you know, the, you know, trucks are not paid off and cost per mile is really high. And obviously he will be, um, you know, demanding like, you know, I need to get, you know, paid more, but then listen, your cost per mile is about like $2, for example, right? And then you're asking me to, I don't know, get $3 per mile or $4 per mile, for example, right? So this is very important when, when the carrier asks you to get like a best paying load. And I'll get you the trick. You know, I, I do have, uh, you know, second, um, you know, screen. I'll be showing you the tactic that I promised you um, that will help you a lot. But think about when you trying to get best paying loads, number one thing you need to know cost per mile, right? It can be, I don't know, from 50 cents per mile up to $2. This is what we see at least, right? So if you know the cost per mile, let's say if, you know, two of my trucks, we have cost per mile about, I don't know, $1.50, then I need dollar on top of that to be profitable. So dollar fifty plus a dollar, that means two dollars and fifty cents per mile. This is what you're looking for, right? So that means whatever you get, two dollars and fifty cents and above, 
that means that is the you know good paying load or best paying loads for me because dollar per mile as a profit is huge right so then there will be a guy who's you know the cost per mile is two dollars now 50 cents as a profit meaning two dollars and and plus the 50 cents is two dollars and fifty cents it's not enough for him because it's two dollars it's costing for him to run his trucks right so you know hope that helps and if you guys have um you know questions please please let me know the, the, the number one thing obviously the cost per mile. You need to know cost per mile, period. So if you don't know cost per mile, there will be a lot of, let's say, independent freight dispatchers, you know, sending proposals saying, hey, we will get you like three, three dollars per you know per mile. It's a two dollars and you know seventy cents per mile or something like that. Or best paying loads for you. Then obviously to me as a carrier, like this pricing is objective. You don't know how much you know costing me to run my trucks and how you're going to promise me for example, $2 or $3 per mile. What if I have $2.50, you know, running my trucks? That means that, you know, I don't, I don't interest in whatever the services you have. So, and the, another thing, obviously, I think this is the biggest one, the relationship you have with your broker. This is huge, right? Think about. It. So if, if, if I'm a broker and you are an independent freight dispatcher, it doesn't matter. Maybe you're a broker, maybe you're a carrier. So if we have a deal, you know, I don't know, a couple of deals, I would say, and let's let's pick a lane from Atlanta to to California, let's say, and and we have done a couple of you know deals already. The next time I'm assigning you a load, it'll be slightly higher, right? So you'll be getting best paying loads from me. Why? Because I really, if, if I'm a broker, I really want you to like, I want you to be in the game right so i need to build a relationship so you as a carrier or independent freight dispatcher building a relationship with the broker broker is no different broker is the same thing right so broker will be a building relationship with you with an independent freight dispatcher specifically with the carrier right this is very important and why we came up with this you know title or, or the topic for this video one of my students asked me this he said come on I book a load and the broker that I had paid me, you know, really good money for, for the lane that he was running. And, I, and he said, like, I, I don't know this specifically, but I think that broker, I think it was a broker agent. And that broker agent works for a couple of other brokerage companies. I don't know the business model, but I was trying to get there. But this is what happens. There's an individual, you know, working with a couple of you know, brokerage companies. I don't know if this legal, I don't know about the business, I don't know, model, but there is a guy working with a couple of brokerage companies. So basically this guy, you know, works with the brokerage companies assigning loads to the carriers, but I think it's a legit. So there is a brokerage company A, brokerage company B, and a brokerage company C. They have a lot of loads and they need carriers their own carriers and there is a broker agent that works remotely maybe and then he basically take care of the you know admin side of it meaning assign or dispatching side of it like dispatching the loads or assigning loads to 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 a carriers so that is the model so i was kind of confused about this and he said like you know i don't know i i know the company sent me the rate confirmation but i don't know the company, the guy, the, like between the carrier and the broker, meaning the broker agent, they must have a you know company as well. And they kind of confuse about, I mean, he confused about this. And I said, I can't find the um, you know, company. And I said, listen, I don't know exactly how that works, but there is a trick inside the load board. You can basically click on the like it's it's, it's like a you know, the, the hard thing is like preferred broker or the broker can also um you know click on this heart meaning you will be preferred carrier for the broker it's it's the same it's the same process I'll, I'll i'll show you why don't i show you right now let me go there real quick there you go so this is the load board and this is what i mean for example we have a lane <clears throat> from let me turn off this there you go so this is the lane you know, it basically runs from Atlanta, Georgia, 
um, you know, and, and I don't have a destination. Just, just you know, show it, show it to you guys. So this is what happens if if you let's say book a load from a broker, and then broker paid you a lot of money, and you're like, hey. I love this, you know, brokerage company and I want to work with this company if they like, I don't know, in the future. And then if they post a load, I want to see, right? And this is what happens is basically you, you come up here, um, let's say GB Hunt Transport Services. When, when you click, this is what you have. This is what you do. Like I, I can remove, right? Some of you maybe know this. Some of you, you know, don't know, but this helps a lot, right? It, it, it like just... <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll I'll go there, guys. I I do see you guys have a lot of um, questions. Please give me a couple of minutes. So you just like click, you know, preferred. What that means is that so if you book a load from you know XPO Logistics, for example, right? Let's click on XPO Logistics. So if you book a load, I think this load is assigned already. So let's come back to to JB Hunt. So I click preferred. What will happen if, let's say, this brokerage company will post a load? It will just, you know, sh show, it will pop up like this yellow heart that this is the preferred company that I would love to work with. And this is the idea, like the building a relationship with the broker, right? So what will happen, like, let me show you, you know, one, one thing. It can go the other way. Meaning if you don't want to work with the brokerage company, maybe, I don't know, you have bad experience and then you're like, like I don't want to, you know, haul for them or I don't want to book lows from the, you know, this company. What you can do and nothing against to this company, I'm just, you know, giving an example. So you can click and you can just, you know, add to a block this offer. So what will happen now, see, like you, you're not wasting your time. You won't be calling, you know, this company and in future loads that are being posted, you know, from this company, you're like, oh, like, I don't want to work with this company, for example, right? So what you can do, as you can see, there's all preferred and, you know, blocked. Do you see guys this, right? So when you click on preferred, if you have multiple, let's say five or 10 or 15 or 20, you know, brokerage companies that I would love to work with them, then it will just, you know, um, filter them out. And then you will see, hey, well, these are the companies, you, you know, that I work with. So, and, and I want to build a relationship with them. So this small, you know, tactic will save you a ton a ton of money and at the same time will make you money and then save a lot of time, right? So basically, if you click, you know, all, then you, you will be seeing all. But then, you know, if you click the preferred, then you will see preferred. And then if you click, you know, blocked, then you will see these are the companies that you blocked and you don't want to work with them. So let me just go there and unblock. There you go. So let's click all. So you got you guys got the idea, right? Awesome. So one of the reasons why you guys, you know, need to do this on a busy day, there will be a lot of brokers, you know, posting loads. And then you need to know specifically, for example, Landstar, you know, I love Landstar and, you know, many of you guys like carriers and independent freight dispatchers love working with them, right? They have a really, you know, good business model and then they pay a lot of money. So I would say, you know, good money for, for their carriers. So what will happen is, you know, you need to build a relationship. So if you want to see the load specifically from, you know, Landstar, these small tactics and guys, you know, trust me, not enough people know these small tactics, but these small tactics will save you a lot of time, right? And then it will help you build a relationship. You know, I have a ton of, you know, other tactics to show you that it will be, you know, for the future videos. So let's see, let me take, you know, some questions and help you with the questions and we will go from there awesome so guys please let me know if you guys you know found this tactic valuable it, it helps let me see okay um what is it let me see okay let me take this one Please, can you say me about logbook department? I mean, do you have a logbook department in your company? In addition, 
what do you think? Editing a logbook is the usual, what is it, usual thing for companies. So, you know, if this is like from for the independent freight dispatching company or the carrier side of the company. So if you are an independent freight dispatcher, this is usually what would I would say the carrier or the owner operator the, who you know owns the truck and operates his trucks, basically he knows his time, right? So you, you as an independent freight dispatcher, you're planning accordingly. For example, you will be running lanes for Monday. So you'll be calling the drivers today, which is today's Friday. You'll be calling them and saying, hey, we'll be booking some loads for Monday. And obviously, I want to know your schedule because, you know, a lot of things can change. And, you know, there's maybe appointments. There's like, I don't know, holidays, anything, right? So you need to, you know, plan in advance. If you have, I don't know, four or five carriers or owner operators, you basically need to kind of list these, you know, owner operators and say, okay, so Mike, he's an available, he is available. Let's say he's running, you know, lanes from Atlanta to Houston, for example, right? So he's okay, then we'll be booking loads on Monday, no problem. Then then there's Jason. Oh, he has an appointment on Tuesday, then obviously we're not booking loads on Monday because he has an appointment, an important appointment on Tuesday. So you're not booking any, any loads. So you need to follow up with this owner operator. And this is basically how it goes, right? So what I'm trying to say is that we don't touch logbooks. But basically, you know, how we do is like, hey, what about your time? So they will be telling us, right? It's, it's not a forced dispatch, right? It's basically you work with the carrier to help him run his trucking company, right? So we don't have any logbook department or something like that. Um, and inside our, you know, carrier side of the business, we don't, we don't just, you know, editing our logbooks or something like that. We don't do that. Okay. Hope that helps. Let me see. Um, um, let me see. Let me take this one. Ashraf says, I had an interview in a big carrier company. They had 200 plus trucks. Okay. I applied for truck dispatching. During the interview, when I mentioned DAT and that I was a student and I still learning. Okay. And what's the question? Okay. So there's no question. Let me see. Maybe there's. Um... Okay. Let's see. Let me take this one. And again, guys, by the way, I don't see um, names, you know, when. The message comes from the uh, Facebook. As you can see, it just says Facebook you know, user. I have my LLC and everything's set up. Are they, there are any, what is it, leads to getting my first carrier apart from cold calling? Okay. So I don't know if, if, if you are a student, because if you're a student, we talk about like lead gen um, and organic outreach. But, it, you know, I really want to know as far as like, what's your marketing strategy? So if you don't want to do cold calling and what would be the marketing strategy and how you're getting leads, please, you know, tell me and then we'll go um, in details. Let's see. Okay. Let me see. There you go. How to start building relations with the broker brokers. Well, I just show you the one, you know, way of building a relationship with the broker. And obviously, when you call the, you know, broker, book a load. And obviously, you need to be nice, you know, with them. And then and this is how you build a relationship, right? And it's, it needs to start somewhere. You need to call them and say, hey, I have available trucks. And this is the load that I'm interested in. And you book a load, you need to deliver on time. And then you, you know updating this, you know, your broker and you constantly, you know, in contact with the broker. And this is basically how it goes, right? It's, it's just, it's all about relationship, right? So awesome. So let's see. Um, I'll just start building relationship. We've got that. Um, okay, let's do this. Um, hey, Kamal, what does it mean to specialize in a one type I thought you can just do all. Okay. When when you say specialize in one type, what do you specifically mean? Do you mean one what type like one type of truck? Is it the like one specific market? So if you say let's say one type of truck, for example, um I might say you just be you know like you need to specialize in in your market, for example, pick a market. 
there's a drive-in market, there's there's a refair market, there's a car hauling market, meaning auto transport, and I'm in the you know flatbed market. So you need to just like go into the flatbed market and nothing else, right? And one reason is that different markets, obviously different language. Um, the one thing is that if you, if you focus on one thing, and there are a lot of money to be made in inside any given market. For example, you can make a lot of money in in, in like a drive-in market. You can make a lot of money in car hauling. You know, I started with car hauling. There's a lot of money to be made. And with, with the refair market, they make a lot of money, right? But, you know, ask a kid in and say, hey, you have, I don't know, four or five flatbed trucks. Why don't you buy another four trucks with the drive-in, right? So it's it's you know it's really hard to focus on two markets right so for example think about you know refer market there's like appointments it, it, you know appointments killing you know carriers so if if your broker says hey you need to be there like 2 p.m. eastern time you must be there at a sharp 2 p.m. and anything can happen and you missed that appointment and you, and you, and, and you just like you at, at, at the, uh, you know, receiving site and then you there, I don't know, let's give it a time, maybe 2.15 or 2.20. It's gone. Now you're in trouble, right? Think about there a lot of mess, right? So think about like a car hauling. There will be a lot of scratches. There will be, I don't know, your driver unloading the, you know, uh, cars and then they're scratched and then there's crashed or something like that, right? So it's just like focusing on one, um, you know, market and, and trust me, and you will make a lot of money. So there are a lot of independent freight dispatchers. I see this. They're, they're offering, um, you know, like on their website, pitching their services to multiple, you know, markets. And we as carriers, when we see that independent freight dispatchers pitching um, to multiple markets, we just like we're not interested. Think about I'm a carrier. I, I'm, I, I own, let's say, four uh, flatbeds. And I, I do see you're like serving, you know, car haulers. You're serving drive-in market. Like, I, I was like, no. What that means is that, you know, it's like, hey, you need to be specialized in my market so that I can work with you. And think about, like, let's get off the topic. Let's think about, like, if you need a heart surgeon, for example, right? So you have a heart problem and then... In, in, what do you do? Like, do you go to liver specialist or do you go to cardiologist? Right? It's simple as that. Simple logic. So do you know that you know this guy specializes in one thing, so I can go and get the help. Hope that helps. Let's see. I'm trying. Okay. Okay, let's take this one. Do you need to have carrier email login to get information from a broker or do you give their information for dispatchers do you need to have carrier email login no you don't um you as an independent freight dispatcher assuming um you need to have your own email so when you um, book a load and then you give your email address and then you will receive the rate confirmation you can go both sides your carrier must maybe will say hey you must use you know the, like our email. So we need to see the, 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 whatever the communication you have with the brokers or with our brokers and we need to see and they will have the specific structure. Then yes, you can you can do that. But, you know, mostly it will be like, hey, you as an independent freight dispatcher, you will have your own email address and then this is how you will be communicating with the broker. Awesome. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so how DAT works? Can I take a subscription without MC or anything else? Yes, you don't need. Um, if you're an independent freight dispatcher and you want to serve, you know, carriers, there, are, you know, there, there are links to both subscription trackers Edge, and then there will be a DAT, you know, power load board. There's free 30 day free trial. If you want to try, there's a link below this video. You don't need an MC number. MC number stands for motor carrier number. So I'm a carrier. I need MC number. And one of the reasons why I need MC number is because I will be hauling, you know, some loads or transporting some goods. And we must have an insurance to cover, you know, those loads, right? So, the, you know, otherwise shippers won't assign loads or brokers won't assign loads to us. 
And this is how it goes. You must have an MC number. In order to have an MC number, you must have a truck. Then you have an MC number. You, in order to activate your MC number, you must have an insurance, right? So you as an independent freight dispatcher, you don't own a truck. Therefore, you don't have an MC number. Therefore, you don't need an insurance, right? So in DAT, and I, I don't know the other load board subscriptions if they have this option, but DAT is very dispatcher friendly specifically independent freight you know dispatchers friendly that means they really want to work with you know dispatchers because they know the value guys bring into the table right or to the market they know this so the carriers need to make money to stay in the game so if they stay in the game they have their you know you know active you know subscriptions and it's 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 not a cheap money it's it's about like i don't know um it's about $200 and then they have you know a premium uh, for their subscriptions. So carriers must stay in the business. And in order to carry must stay in the business, they have a team members. And team, and when we say team members, first thing comes up to mind is independent freight dispatchers. Independent freight dispatchers help carriers, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, get loads and obviously uh, move their trucks. So obviously you don't need the MC number. Let's see. Okay, so let me see. Okay, I think we already, let me take this one. Do you need the email login from the driver? Okay, I think this was um, one for a carrier. Carrier, or do you give the broker dispatcher email and just forward to a driver? You know, it, it's 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 basically, uh, you know, how that goes is, is like, if you get the rate confirmation, you can take a screenshot and send a message. You know, it, if you have a software, you can do that, but it, you know you need to simplify this, right? So you have you can email, but there there will be you know softwares that you know people use. It's 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 all depends. This is what I'm trying to say. There there are the carriers. There there will be a carrier. He's running you know his you know company systematically. What that means is that he already systematized his business. You know there's like workflow is it's there they, they they have a framework they have software but then they're you know the carriers that they you know basically they pick up a load and then deliver a load and this is how they get paid and they don't have you know softwares or workflows whatnot and this is where you will be helping them and there's basically running simple you know trucking business when when i say simple trucking business they don't use any software this is what will happen you just like take a screenshot of the rate confirmation or just, you know, send the, um, you know, pickup location for the driver. That's what he needs, right? The pickup location, the load number. And you'll go there and then basically mention the load number and the people on the ship, shipping site, they will load them up. That's it. He's ready to go. So this is basically what, what happens. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, let me see. Um, in Canada, do I need to learn in different load board other than DAT? I'm not sure. I do have a lot of, um, you know, students from, from Canada. Um, they're using DAT with no problem. Um, so it, it all depends in, in the business model. If, if you're just like creating your independent freight dispatching company in the Canada, then there will be, I don't know, you need, maybe you need to use um, specific load board because you have a Canadian company. But if you're in Canada, then you started a company in the United States, then you can use the DAT, for example, right? Because you have US-based company. Hope that helps. Let me see. Okay. Okay. So let me see. Okay, let me let me take this question. Why big carrier have their own methods of load board and dispatchers? Why big carrier or big carriers have their own methods of load board? What do you mean when you say like their own methods? Like, do you mean private load boards? I'm not sure about this. Um, let me see. Can we talk personally about your course, please? So <laughs> I don't know how that gets personally. So if you, if you wanted to email me, you can email at info at dispatchtrucks.com. But if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm here live. You can ask me whatever the questions you have. So um, is DAT only for US market? Yes, DAT is only for US market, but they might have, you know, I don't know, sister company in different, you know, countries. 
right? It's a different thing, but I don't know where we're getting with this. So <laughs> why this is important. So if you have a US-based company, you can use DAT, no problem. But, you know, majority of the loads is basically what I would say the load boards out there are designed for the U.S. market. Yes. And in, in order to access the load boards, you must have U.S.-based company. Yes, if that helps. Cool. Let's see. Um, let me take this one. When search for a loads on DAT, how should you sort the results? Basically, when you enter, let's say you have the lane for the for, for, for a carrier, different carriers will have different expectations. For example, owner operator owner operator might say, Hey, I'm not running loads to New York, for example. I'm not running loads to Florida or something like that. Or specifically, if, if we are contracted, you know, with my company, then obviously we're not, you know, going anywhere. And we have a specific lane, which is Atlanta, Georgia to Houston, Texas, and then coming back from Houston, Texas to you know Atlanta, Georgia. So when you have this, the lane, basically the origin and the des destination, and then some carriers will say, hey, we have the origin, but I don't care as far as the destination goes. You can basically search whatever you want, right? So I can pick it up in Atlanta. I can go wherever you want. Just get me the best paying loads, right? So you can do that. But when you have the you know, origin, you see, you put the origin at Atlanta, Georgia, whatever the destination, I mean, the origin is, meaning where the truck is, um, or the closest, for example, there's a deadhead. I can move from Atlanta to Charlotte, North Carolina, if, if there's a, you know, good paying loads going to, I don't know, anywhere, you know, in the United States. Hope that helps, right? So I'm in the um, Atlanta, Georgia, there's a good paying loads in, in Charlotte, North Carolina, what about, I don't know, it's about 250 miles, you know, from Atlanta, Georgia. I can go there and I can pick up and I can go and deliver. So when you enter your origin and destination, when you hit search, it will basically will give you the results, right? Hope that helps. Oh, let's see. Um, let's see. How can I learn driving recruiting? So this is... You know, this is very, very good service to offer to carriers. This is um, this is huge. There are a lot of you know companies out there, you know, offering this you know this services. Driver is it's huge for carriers, um, and and if you, if you can do that, but I would I would definitely recommend like you know learning how to run social media, and social media advertising specifically, and more specifically how to run Facebook ads. This is this is huge. So if you can do that. And obviously, you will have you know really good business. So if if you're like you know I'm an independent freight dispatcher at the same time, I want to offer this service. It's like it's it's a golden, right? So if you can like think about me. So if you know how to find you know drivers, then I'll basically like you know, shoot me an email, and then we we need to work together, right? So we need drivers, and if you can you know get drivers, train drivers, and then you know we can hire drivers, then. You, you have really good business then, okay? Cool. So um, let me see. I think this will be, how can I learn? Okay, do you have some resources for this or um, some way to learn? How can I find information about it? So we, we, do, we do teach inside the course, like, you know, the, the program, how to find carriers, but the marketing strategies and tactics, you know, it's basically will work for this, you can, you know, and, and basically this is how we hire our drivers. But if you know how to run, you know, Facebook ads and, you, you know, you can also, you know, um, recruit drivers organically, meaning using social media. There's, you know, tactics that we teach inside the program. But if you're like, hey, I want to scale this and I want to offer this, you know, services to multiple carriers, like I need to get like hundreds of, you know, drivers, then obviously you are looking for paid advertising, specifically, you know, Facebook ads. So we do teach inside the program, but what you can do is just like, instead of targeting, you know, carriers, you'll be targeting drivers. But other than that, I would say, you know, just look specific, you know, training um, as far as Facebook ads goes. Okay. Okay, let's see. Um, let me see. Do you have any testimonial videos from former students? Absolutely, I do. I do have a lot of testimonials. Um, there will be a link below this video. You can just, you know, it's it's for the 
um, the, the study guide. You can just download the, the study guide, and then there will be a page with you know talking about the uh, program, and then you will see when you scroll down over the page, bottom of the page, and you will see there you know a um, couple of my students um, you know giving the testimonials. But if you need more students to talk to, maybe personal to them, there will be a link below this video. Um, you know, you can join the Facebook group. I definitely encourage you to join that Facebook group, and you can ask you know question directly to my students. There, you know, a lot of you know students out there. You can ask them absolutely. And then there, are, you know, a lot of students watching you know this video right now. You can ask them as well. Absolutely. Um, let me see. Hello, Kamal. I appreciate the info you gave us. Absolutely. I subscribed to DAT yesterday and I use your link. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Guys, well, thank you so much. And again, uh, we just, you know, this is a new year and then we, you know, trying to pick up this. Uh, we do this um, every Tuesday and Friday. We will stick to the uh, schedule. So if you guys any, if you have any questions, please let me know in you know in in, in the uh, comment section. And you can email me using the email address that we have: info at Prime Express. I mean the info at the, you know dispatchtrucks.com. Um, and again, if you have questions right now, I'll take your questions. Let me see if we have more questions. There's no more question. Awesome. Guys, let's meet on Tuesday. And Tuesday we'll have 5 p.m. Eastern time. Please prepare your questions and we'll go from there. Until then, thank you. Bye for now.